Is there a secret to making your AI agents truly understand your Flutter codebase and massively speed up your development workflow? Well, for me, it's all about these three essential folders. And in this video, I'm going to break down exactly what these folders are, how they fit into my AI assisted workflow, and how you can make the most of them in your AI coding sessions. You see, in the last few months, I've been leaning heavily into AI agents like Cloud Code and Codex. And these powerful tools are creating a fundamental shift in how we develop software. But it's less about directly writing every line of code ourselves and more about orchestrating AI, providing precise context and carefully verifying its output. And to get the most out of agentic AI, we need to rethink our entire workflow. But here's the catch. These tools won't produce consistently good results unless you give them the right context. And in fact, it's fair to say that the results you get are only as good as your prompts. So how can you, as an engineer, use AI to its full potential? Well, in this video, I want to focus on three essential folders that I've been using for effective AI coding in my Flutter apps. So let's dive in. And the three folders I want to talk about are called AI Toolkit, AI Specs, and AI Docs. So let me walk you through them. We'll explore what they are, what specific problems they solve, and most importantly, how you can actually replicate them in your own project. By the way, I think the best way to understand these folders is to see them in action on a real project. So for example, right here I have a currency converter app, which allows me to see the current exchange rate between different currencies, as well as the historical rates using this chart. And as you can see, this is a regular Flutter project. But in the file explorer, I have these three folders called AI Docs, AI Specs, and AI Toolkit. And the first one I want to cover is the AI Toolkit folder. And this is where I keep all my LLM-friendly commands and patterns for Flutter development. And as we can see from the README, the reason I created this folder is that setting up a new Flutter project from scratch takes time. While the braids can work well for new projects, but they are often too opinionated and don't work reliably with existing projects. On the other hand, AI agents understand the structure of your project and can speed up development, but without proper guardrails, they have a high failure rate. So, thanks to this toolkit, I'm now able to do a few really cool things. For example, I can prime my AI agent with relevant breaking changes in the Dart language and Flutter SDK, ensuring they don't generate code that doesn't work. I can also quickly run commands that I need to use over and over in my development workflow. And it also helps me to enforce project guidelines and code style more consistently in every single coding session, regardless of which AI agent I'm using. And finally, I can more quickly scaffold new projects with components and utility functions in a standardized way across projects. So how do I use this toolkit in practice? Well, let me show you. Typically, I can start a new AI coding session by running cloud code, like this. And then, once it's ready, I can type a forward slash and run the seed context cloud command. And this is a custom command that is defined over here in my AI toolkit commands. And for convenience, it is also included as an alias under cloud commands over here. And this means that I can run it as a custom cloud command like this. So let me open up this window. And as you can see, cloud code is now reading all the instructions in the command. And once it is done, I can see that all these guidelines are now available as context in the Cloud session. And this is very important because it removes ambiguity when Cloud is writing code. For example, thanks to a specific pattern that I've included in this toolkit, I can ensure that Cloud will always create reusable widget classes rather than helper builder methods. And thanks to another pattern, Cloud will always use predefined constant sizes for things like paddings, gaps, rounded corners, and so on. And the core idea here is that whenever I encounter a situation where AI doesn't do what I want, I can write a new guideline and add it to my toolkit, and then I can include it in my seed contest cloud file. And this will ensure that no matter what AI agent I use, it will always follow these guidelines, and this leads to more consistent and higher quality code. Oh, and by the way, I've also created a variant of this command that works with the Codex agent by OpenAI. And to use this, I can open a new terminal and start the Codex CLI. And then I can run the seed context codex command. 
And as you can see, Codex is now reading all the files that I've listed in this command. And once it's done, it generates this summary, confirming all the guidelines that I've specified. And the end result is that both Cloud and Codex can be primed with the exact same guidelines and produce more consistent results. And by the way, in addition to coding guidelines, I've also added some other really useful commands. For example, here is a command that instructs my agents to write commits as conventional commits, which is something that saves me time because it means I no longer have to write commit messages by hand. And another really useful command is make plan. And this is something that I use every time I want Cloud or Codex to generate a plan from a file that lists all the requirements for a specific feature or bug report. And by using this command, I ensure that the plan will be generated following a specific structure and by adhering to my guidelines. And by the way, another thing I find quite useful is letting my agent know about all the aliases that I've defined in my local machine. And as a result, as soon as Cloud reads this file, it already knows that I'm running Build Runner in watch mode. And this removes a lot of friction when I'm implementing new features, because the AI isn't suggesting comments that I've already got running. In summary, this toolkit is all about providing the right context and removing friction when coding with AI. And since it is a Flutter AI toolkit, I've decided to add it to all my Flutter projects as a sub-module. And this setup is great because it allows me to work independently on this toolkit as its own separate repo. And then I can easily update it in all my projects as needed. And I should say that while this toolkit is very much a work in progress, it's already helping me by accelerating onboarding because I can quickly run common setup tasks rather than performing them by hand. It's also enforcing consistency by ensuring a uniform code quality and style across the entire codebase. And it's also reducing my cognitive load, because I can offload repetitive decisions to AI. So for the time being, this is very much a personal tool that I'm developing alongside my project. And my plan is that once it works reliably with multiple agents, and it is a bit more mature, I will make it available for purchase. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, so we have now covered the AI Toolkit folder. And now it's time to move to the next folder, which is called AI Specs. So what is the main idea here? Well, as I said before, agentic AI coding is transforming the way I build software and I can increasingly rely on AI to plan, build and verify on my behalf. But once again, the results that I get are only as good as my prompts. And even with good prompts, I still need to put the right guardrails in place to ensure that my AI agents stay on track. And by adding this AI specs folder, I can keep track of the prompts and plans that I use for agentic coding and make sure that I follow this workflow consistently. For example, let's consider a feature that I recently implemented, which was all about adding local data storage to my app, specifically to ensure that the base and target currencies are persisted across app restarts. This way, users don't lose their preferences. So how would I implement this feature using AI? Well, in this scenario, the first step is to create a markdown file such as 003 user data storage prompt.md, which outlines all the requirements for this feature. And in essence, this file represents the thinking part of this workflow. And once I have this file, I can feed it to my AI agent and ask it to make a plan. For example, here I have cloud code running on my terminal, and the first thing I can do is to switch to plan mode and then I can use the make plan command that I mentioned before and then I can pass 003 user data storage prompt as an argument like this and then I can wait for Cloud to generate a plan based on this prompt and its understanding of the code base. Now in this specific case it won't generate anything useful because the feature is already implemented but if I was implementing this feature for real I would then iterate on the plan until I'm happy with the results. So let me go ahead and stop Cloud right here. And just to show you how a completed plan might look like, I can open this file called user data storage plan. And as you can see, this includes an overview about the feature, along with some information about the data that is to be persisted, as well as a solution that is based on shared preferences. And down below, I can find all the implementation tasks. 
And once again, these have all been completed because I've already implemented this feature. And if you want to learn more about how I implement a full feature from beginning to end, you can watch my previous video about AI coding with Cloud Code. But as a quick summary, the idea is that once I'm happy with the plan that is produced by Cloud Code, I can ask it to write it to a file, and then I can go ahead and ask Cloud to implement the plan. And especially when it comes to complex plans, I want AI to implement them one stage at a time. This way I can more easily review the code and steer Cloud in the right direction if needed. And by the way, when it comes to verification, I can let Cloud run all the tests and verify that they are green. And of course, I can also test the app myself to make sure that the feature works as expected. And just to be clear, this entire process is quite iterative and things don't always go smoothly. For example, you might discover some requirements or edge cases that were missing from the initial prompt, and you need to expand part of the plan to include them. Or maybe you end up with an implementation that is overly complex, and you need to explore alternative solutions. And all of this is to say that this workflow represents the happy path. But in some cases, it's possible that you reach a dead end, and you might need to go back and revisit your assumptions, discuss them with AI, and start over. And there might even be cases that are so hard that AI simply cannot solve them, no matter how specific you are with your prompts. On the other hand, if you end up with a working solution, I strongly encourage you to continue iterating until the code is production ready. And the bottom line here is that you want to set a high bar for the quality of the code that is generated. And since producing code is cheap with AI, you can afford to correct course or even restart from scratch. And this is worthwhile if you want your app to be maintainable in the long run. Alright, so let's get back on track and talk about the delivery phase. And eventually you will end up with an updated plan where all the subtasks are completed, all the tests are green and the app works exactly as expected. So this is the time to push your changes to GitHub. For example, here we have the completed plan and here is the PR that was merged for this feature. And as a top tip, you can instruct your AI agent to include the original plan with the completed tasks as the PR description in GitHub, which is something that I've done in this other PR, which was all about refactoring part of the code base. So as you can see, this is what my workflow looks like, and it works equally well for new features, bug fixes, and refactors. And I can use the AI specs folder as a history for all the prompts and plans that I've been working on. And as a little tip, I found it useful to prefix each of these files with a number, which corresponds with the number of the corresponding issue or PR on GitHub. And the idea is that over time, this AI specs folder becomes almost like a local copy of the issues and PRs in the remote GitHub repo. In summary, the AI specs folder is a written track record of all the work that I've been doing. And by writing my prompts and plans as files, I can ensure that my AI agents have the right context. Because when I start a new session, I can simply tell AI to read the relevant files and get back to work. All right, so let's move to the next folder, which is called AI Docs. And you can think of this as a persistent knowledge base for your AI agents. And this is a good place for storing API docs and integrations, architecture and design docs, hidden non-code business logic, and project specific patterns that might be different from those in the AI toolkit. For example, in my currency converter app, I've created this AI spec file, which contains the specification for the currency APIs that I'm using. And I've also added this UI spec, which outlines the main screens in the app and the high level functionality for each of them. And I expect that as my project continues to grow, I will keep this folder updated with all the critical information that my AI agents need to know. For example, one of my other projects is called Flutter Tips. And this is a more mature application that I've developed last year, before I started using AI agents like Cloud and Codex. And since I do use these tools now, I decided to create the AI docs folder for this project as well. And I've used AI to generate all the documentation for it. And admittedly, it was not easy to do this, and perhaps this would be a topic for another video. But the end result is that now I have files such as architecture.md, which outlines the main architecture of the app as well as details about the directory structure, as well as state management, and so on. And by feeding these documents to AI when I start a new coding session, I can get AI to understand the project and generate code that is more consistent with the app's architecture. Alright, so we've come a long way, and now it's a good time to make a summary.
And as we have seen, there are three essential folders that I use for my Flutter development workflow. These folders are AI Toolkit, which is a collection of LLM-friendly commands and patterns for Flutter development. AI Specs, which is a collection of prompts and plans for ongoing work, such as features, bug fixes, and refactors. And then AI Docs is a persistent knowledge base for my AI agents. And just to be clear, the main difference between AI Docs and AI Specs is that AI Docs is more about persistent knowledge that is updated over time, like living documentation. On the other hand, AI Specs is more like a historical track record of the work that you've been doing. And while this contains all useful information, some of it might become outdated over time as the project evolves. And overall, I'm finding that these folders are super helpful because they help me stay organized and follow a consistent workflow. And they make it easier for AI to follow my guidelines and stay on track. And they also reduce a lot of friction because I can easily reuse patterns, comments, and prompts that are battle tested. And in fact, I encourage you to also create similar folders along with your own collection of comments and patterns. And if you're not sure where to start, just think about what repetitive tasks could be automated or situations where AI seems to get it wrong and see if you can write your own guidelines to steer it in the right direction. And while it will take you a bit of extra time to do this, I believe it will absolutely pay off in the long run, leading to faster development, fewer bugs and more consistent quality. By the way, in this video, I haven't even talked about MCP servers, sub-agents and other advanced topics. And if I'm honest, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface about what is possible with AI agents. But as I continue to explore and learn about AI-assisted coding, I'm looking forward to share more videos about it. And if there's anything in particular that you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.